Good morning, everyone. Mike Carey with Rob Holman. We're here at beautiful Maradon Resort on the Potholes. We've got special guest Rob Hahn with us this morning, and we're fishing with Shelby Ross. And Shelby, I'm pretty excited because last night you said the plug bite is on. It is, and uh, I really don't normally pull, pull plugs this time of year, but uh, Great bite the last several days. Uh, 16 walleye and a couple big trout yesterday, and uh, no reason uh, it shouldn't still be there. Perfect weather conditions, cool breeze, overcast, perfect for walleye. You said a little chop on the water is a good thing. Absolutely, it and breaks up that light on the surface. Walleye don't like the bright light, and uh, they don't like the boat going over the top of them when it's calm, so uh, all that's working in our favor. I'm pretty excited, so let's fire up this boat. Beautiful new boat you got here, and let's go fishing. Alrighty. Out early in the morning, gonna go out and cast away. All these waters here for the big boys. And we all come out to play. It's a Northwestern way. Northwest Fishing Reports. Presented by Tanner Seafood and Max Lure. Everybody ready? Yeah. Shelby, I love your electronics. They just explain exactly what we're going to do, but show the viewers um, the uh, humps and we're going to be fishing today. What we're doing is we're fishing a bunch of basins in between sand dunes and uh, these, these deeper basins, the fish are just wandering looking for food. And uh, right now we're driving through a willow patch here. If you look at the screen, we're seven foot deep. Everything that shallow has got vegetation on it. It's uh, pretty much unfishable. And here at some point, these fish will transition into these weeds, into the cover with the bait fish. Right now, though, they're out in these open basins. And so we're just trolling through all these big open holes, catching these fish out in the open. So it's uh, kind of similar to our fall fishery, but uh, in the spring. Like I said, your electronics are incredible. It's just really amazing to see. And uh, you know these waters, you know every one of these little humps that we're going to be fishing into. Our electronics have come so far in the last 10 years and even in the last five years. The hummingbird uh, takes a lot of guesswork out of, uh, out of what you're doing. Let's get those rods going, catch some fish. Alrighty. If you ever get in a guide boat anywhere in the world and you look at the baits that are tied up, find the most beat up one there is with the least amount of paint on it, make sure the hooks are still good, that's the one you want because that's the one that's been getting the action. I have no idea how many fish this has caught, but it came out of the box from last year, beat up, and it's gotten more beat up just in the last three days. So, uh, Rob, we're gonna give this one to you up front. All right. And uh, going to the right place. <laughs> go, uh, go 120 feet okay. and uh, put your your rod low to the water so it doesn't uh, blow in the wind. Copy that. We're gonna go ahead and attach the planer board here. Line through the front clip into the back clip, put some slack in between them so when the fish hits, that flag goes down. Rob, we're gonna put that out about 50 more feet. Use your thumb to uh, scoot it away from the boat. And run the straight rods, no planer board, straight out the back. 130 to 145 has been the magic number the last couple days. We'll experiment around and see what, uh, what they're after today. Number five, Berkeley Flicker Shad in Fire Tiger. I'm gonna put it out on the uh, left planer board. So on the line counter right here, about 100, find a lucky number around 120 feet. Keep it low to the water so the wind doesn't blow the line around. Perfect. And just Thank let you. me know when you get to 120, we'll, we'll attach the planer board. Okay, sounds good. Use your thumb to go out slow. Go out another 50 feet out to 20. Yes. Okay, 170. Up on it. Up on it. I have no 
idea what it is. Down. There it's waking up. He's not giant, but he's a star. He didn't even know he was hooked. He was just along for the ride. That's a nice fish. It's on the, it's on the scarfed up the messed up hook. Yep. In the back out, keep it low to the water so it doesn't blow in the wind. Down. Yep, down by the water. Fish, fish, fish. <laughs> it's a double! I was putting the line out for the planer board on the on the rod that uh, Rob just hooked up. I had 90 feet out and that fish just slammed the plug. At the boat, oh, came off. Oh. Still got yours, Rob? Yep, yep still on. Go over me, go over it's me. Fishing <laughs> Uh, 23. Step back up the boat, just slide up the rail a little bit so I can get behind you. Nice fish. Nice fish, Rob! Flip, flip. Alright, that's a nice one. Sweet. Oh, that's a nice fish. The fish are quality this year, holy cow. We've got several uh, rods here lined up together. Rob, this is a pretty nice fish for you, first one of the day. I'm happy with it. So 21 and a half inches, you can keep one fish on the potholes daily over 22 inches. That said, Shelby encourages release of the bigger fish. Those are usually females. We want to keep this fishery uh, vibrant. So we release the big fish, but this one goes in the in the uh, live well. Sounds good to me. It's tips and trips, new techniques and locations to expand your fishing horizons. One of the things uh, that's really important here in the winter is to wear uh, lots of layers of clothes, and that starts with your base layer. I've got Gray's Harbor Unders. I've just started wearing them this year, and I'm really satisfied with the product. I've got the long sleeve top, I've got the long john bottoms. The uh, cool thing about this product is it's a patented technology two layer base layer. The inside layer actually wicks moisture away from your skin to the outer layer and doesn't come back in. So it keeps you dry and it keeps you uh, warm. I definitely recommend you giving it a try. Check out their website, Grays Harbor Unders. We also have a link to them on Northwest Fishing Reports and keep yourself warm all day long. Fish after fish after fish. Fish on the planer board. Down by the water in these waves. Oh yeah. Shelby. Yeah, we're fighting the wind, we're fighting a kicker motor, and fighting some fish at the same time. Yeah, it kind of was a perfect storm, but uh, well, we got three fish in the boat already, lost a couple. Off to a good start. Let's get some more. Shelby, I noticed one of the things you did is put out a sea anchor, and uh, explain why you did that. So we're drifting with the wind now. We're using the big motor because our kicker motor uh, is uh, getting too hot and uh, so the drift sock just slows us down. We're shooting for two miles an hour and with this breeze we're, we're right there. So perfect drift, perfect speed. Just need a little, uh, little break. Everyone that's a pro tip. If you're out in rough windy conditions those sea anchors are actually pretty beneficial. They, uh, they absolutely uh, make it fishable where uh, otherwise it would not be and uh, 
Just slows the troll. Definitely a fish on the board. Want that rod up over my head, over my head, the rod tip, perfect. Just keep coming nice and smooth. This one's got a little more oomph to him. Keep getting the big ones. Oh yeah. Just keep tension on me, keep tension on me. Now go to the side, right down by the water. Keep that fish down, not up on the surface where they get a chance to get loose. They get uh, riled up right near the boat. When I tell you, you're gonna lift that rod toward me. Ready? Oh, lift, nice one. lift. Nice. One. nice. Oh, 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 oh. Wow. Look at that fish. And he's off in the net. Nice wow. work on the rod. If you'd have given him any slack, he'd have swam away. Wow, look at that. That's a heck of a walleye, man. Yeah, it is. It's a nice class of fish this year, Shelby. Yes, it is. Oh. You, you told me in the past it's kind of a cycle depending on the feed and the population on the size of these walleye? You know, and if you look at our past videos, the size of the fish we were catching five years ago, mm -hmm. this was this would be the big fish of the trip. Now it's average. That's gonna, great. Gonna put him on the board, kind of have a personal policy of mine. If it's over 22, we're letting it go. I don't think he's quite there. I think he's 20 and a half, but uh, we'll measure. Sure. Not, not a big deal to keep some fish for dinner, but no reason to keep them all. And he is 21 and three quarter. You guys want to fish for dinner? Oh yeah. We will keep him for dinner. Let's get some more. Plug's working though. Back down. Yep. I once thought I I once thought I was wrong, but I was mistaken. <laughs> Shelby, explain to our viewers the advantages of running planer boards. So what the planer boards do is a couple different things for you. It allows you to fish a wider swath of water by pulling your bait out off to the side there, and. It puts your bait in undisturbed water where you're not running over those fish with the motor. And uh, on a windy day like this, it, that's really not so critical. When it's dead flat, calm, and sunny, getting that bait out away from the boat is critical. And a lot of our biggest fish of the year are caught on the planer boards. I think a lot of it's because you're not running them over with the motor. And the 26-foot shadow driving over the top of them doesn't help the bite either on a calm, sunny day. Day like today, we're really just using it to spread our are set out. All right. So pulling, pulling the plugs versus bottom bouncing, which is kind of the traditional spring method, we're covering 10 times the water at two and a half miles an hour versus one mile an hour dragging a worm on the bottom, so. Plus the spread, more opportunities. Absolutely. To encounter fish. Yep. All right, thank you. More action after the break. Fish on! Might slow down a little bit, but still interesting. Uh, Honey old. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, limb cod. Oh, it's a trophy limb cod. A limb cod. This is what you live for. Fish on! I'm a planer board. 
why it's pretty fun to watch those flags go tilting over. It means you got a good fish. The release right there is critical. That's when you can lose these fish, so it's really important to make sure your line is there's no slack in it when it's released. That's a good fish. We really haven't seen many of the, the 12, 13 inches. Any. Don't say that, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been it's been just qual one quality fish after. Oh, nice, nice head shake. This is a good fish. One quality fish after another. Another nice eater. Shall be used as a rubber net, which is really important, especially when you're fishing with trebles. It's just nice. Easy to get the hooks out of the net, for sure. And it's better on the fish. So Shelby, we've got a, a flicker shad here, right? Yep, that's a Berkeley flicker shad in number five, in fire tiger color. And uh, if uh, you'd only have one lure on Potholes Reservoir and had to uh, figure out a way to eat, I'm taking a number five in fire tiger. Why do you pick this one as opposed to some of the other ones? The flicker shads are kind of uh, Berkeley's answer to the uh, Rapala shad wrap. I've got, this is the uh, shad wrap right here in my hand. But they're kind of different animals. The, the, the shad wrap is a balsa wood bait. The flicker shad is plastic with uh, internal rattles. They're real similar in size. There's a couple more foot of dive depth in the same number five in a flicker shad versus the shad wraps and uh, and those rattles and uh, sometimes that little extra dive depth means catching fish versus not sometimes it means being hung up versus not too so yeah and the flicker shads are half the price of a shad wrap which uh, sure doesn't hurt when you uh, burn through some crankbaits because you uh, are going to lose a few you're going to lose a few one thing to keep in mind with the flicker shads because of those rattles in the package and you can hear them rattling Brand new in the package. If you take that bait, take it to the side of the boat, break those rattles loose. Now it seems like they'll settle either in manufacturing or in shipping. And if they're stuck on one side of the bait, no amount of tuning the eye is ever gonna make that bait run correctly. And yeah. uh, so tapping them, 99% of the time they run true right out of the box. It's like the sun is out and uh, Brighter than it was this morning was pretty overcast, and our last several fish have been on this flicker shad color. So we're uh, going to change this rod to that same uh, fire tiger color. And uh, this morning, the uh, slick mouse was the color of choice. Now, like I say, it seems uh, the fire tiger is coming on, so we're going to get some more of them out. Yeah, up, the up, flag, up. Flag went off. It hit a couple times nice. It hit a couple times real nice. Are we still there, Sean? Real, real. Oh, yeah. It's been real quality fish. Oh, yeah, ready? That's like almost as big as the last one I just got. <laughs> It might be. No, it's, it's, it's a nice fish. It's a nice fish. Oh, yeah. That board just stopped. Yeah, you know, it's, it's a. Coming. Uh, oh, not yet. Ready? Lift. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Look at that. That's a good one. That's the biggest one for the day. Could be. For sure. All right. That's a fun one. Yeah, that fish was determined. Determined not to come to the boat, but we got her. <laughs> Through the prime netting skills of Shelby Ross from Once Outdoor Adventures. So yeah, we're gonna measure it up. That's uh, that's close, huh, Shelby? Yeah. That is 22. 22 and a half. So, so that fish, you're, it's legal to keep. We got plenty of fish in here for a nice fish fry. We're gonna go ahead and let this one go. Come on, stick 
Yep. Let's get this girl back in the lake. Good breeder out there, huh? Half a million eggs and a mature female. Hey, if you're looking for some good fishing out in the potholes, check out Shelby Ross, Ross Outdoor Adventures. And you too can be on fish like this. Release. <laughs> I'm Shelby Ross. Visit my website at rossoutdooradventures.com. Fish on! It's been a fun day out here. Ross Outdoor Adventures, Shelby Ross. Take a picture. I want a picture, Shelby. Got us on, we're wrapping up the day. Got us on uh, some nice walleye. We're at the Mardon Resort filleting station. They've got a great facility here to take care of the fish. Shelby's gonna run through and clean some of these walleyes on the filetway fish mat. So Shelby, walk me through what we're doing here. We bled the fish. Mm -hmm. We're taking 45 pictures of them. And we're right. gonna uh, <laughs> fillet them and bag them and uh, you guys are gonna take them home and enjoy them. Right behind the fins, angle toward the head. Right down to the backbone. Right down the backbone. Almost to the end of the tail. Flip it over. Slide right down the skin. Right along the rib bones. One nice fillet there. A bit of rib meat left on the back of the rib cage, right down to the edge of the bones. Don't cut through the chunk of rib meat. That's all there is to it. Repeat on the other side. And that was the fillet away fish map with Shelby Ross, Ross Outdoor Adventure.